I will say I am spun up to talk about the truck tragedy of 2020. Wasn't that 2020? I think. Or answer those questions. If so, yeah, that 2019 was a hell of a year because that was. It wasn't 2020. Wait, it wasn't 2020. It was, I thought it was 2019. Jesus, you'll have pictures. No, I can't answer my search. Well, that, that's what, that was like. I don't have those pictures anymore. I remember because that was. That was. We were. Because you were scouting for the contest for February. Mm-hmm, yep. Um, it was literally my birthday. <laughs> oh. I look up pictures of like Rex on my phone, and it's just an ungodly amount of Rex on a bunch of women. <laughs> no, on this fucking road right here. <laughs> Over the years, Jesus, that was twenty twenty. Man, twenty twenty. R.I.P. Ranch Runner. Exactly. So, so are we doing this? That's the that's the topic. That's the topic. So, I'm in it. Uh, in o- the, the name of the podcast, an ode to the Ranch Runner. <laughs> yeah. And I look like uh, I have tons of pictures of it, so I can yeah. I can like the thumbnail and all that. So Wade being a redneck is slightly <laughs> into <laughs> trucks. Big old big old trucks where they go. You, you were you were literally taught our audience are gum based some truck lovers. Like you city boys can't like okay, let me just I just gotta say it. I think there's a like I like the newer Fords, but like your model era, especially with the way you had it with like the more rounded hood and front end, it was like that was your truck was really cool. Yeah, because literally the next year they the new body style. Yeah. But you're okay. Think of how much you love Taylor Swift. That's how much people love pickups. Yeah. And uh R.I.P. Toby Keith. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It just you come out of nowhere with that one. Then he have he has something. Is it the red red, red solo cup? There's a line in there something about pickup trucks. I have because it's coming. It's literally and, a freaking country song. There's definitely something about a truck in there. Yeah. <laughs> what, cold beer. <laughs> what was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. R.I.P. Toby Keith. Um, before we get going down this t- this this uh, this story has so many levels. Like, rank aside, like the truck history and everything, all that aside, when we get to why we're oh, just that was now talking almost four about, years ago, yeah. <laughs> we're like right there. Yeah. Why? Why Wade doesn't contest hunt? <laughs> yeah. That was literally the last time I seriously contest hunted. I've hunted like one more time since then, and it was just kind of like a bullshit round. But there's so many levels because it doesn't stop there. There's a reason why it's been four years and we haven't brought this up yet. It's because uh, I'm just now allowed to talk about it. Before we get into that, <laughs> we'd like to thank our sponsors, Birch Gold, <laughs> for the upcoming <laughs> inflation crisis. I, I, I sit down on my list the other night and I forgot the damn list. Because <laughs> look, all that shit, but... It does seem as if, like, a lot of podcasters are really starting to heavily take on sponsors and YouTubers. Yeah. It's like one... It's now Nowadays, it's like podcasts have turned into radio shows, like, the, the with all the sponsors. So, you see the same thing with everything? Like, everybody's, like, progress when it's just, like, cyclic fashion. So, that's a... You know, like, you have the... The mall turns into like the outdoorsy center and the micro shops, which circulates and turns all the way back into a mall again. <laughs> Where it's like, man, imagine this was all these shops were connected and it was air conditioned. Yeah. And there was the El Chico's in there. And then, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. It's like cable packages. It's like, oh, what is like, oh, streaming services. And the next thing you know, yeah. what, what do we, what if we bundled these streaming services? Yeah. That's literally what's happening. And yeah, now we're back to radio. Are you the, are you the, the, Howard Stern of hunting, and I, and would that make me Robin? <laughs> You're much more of an Artie. <laughs> I fancy myself like a Opie. No, no, no. Fuck Opie, Anthony. Anthony. See, Cooley. I never listened to that show. Uh, oh, oh man. I know it was big. I just they just they always had the best. Fu- they had the funniest shit happening there. I forgot what it was that got them canceled. They did some shit with the church. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it. <laughs> Chuck, uh, Chuck Jocks. Yeah. 
Well, today's podcast is brought to you by AlloyMunitions.com. And if you're in Midland, stop by Ally Outdoors. Camo going on sale soon? We just talked about it today. They should be working on it. And then a lot of new shit coming in from the, the old shot shows. Yes, in which a little upcoming, we will be covering shot show stuff. Uh, I've got a massive list. I need to go through there and like detail it down. Uh, in one of the upcoming full podcasts, yeah. Uh, like the my my biggest complaint about it is is like almost like a bunch of these gun tubers covered it, and almost every single one covered the same shit. It's like I know there's thousands of booths in there. I didn't realize until I talked to a rep today how many companies weren't there. Yeah, I know. It said Vortex no go, Sig no go. Um, who, oh yeah, a bunch. Of in my things. opinion. There's no need in it nowadays. All of them are like, I just, I don't see any need in it. Yeah. But anyways, I mean, it's well, cool. You, you, got, you could have shots, though, so I can go and like post pictures of how cool I am hanging out with cool people, <laughs> doing cool things. Oh, look it's, at my meal. I'm drinking. Ugh. It's literally, it's literally just all gun tubers now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. But anyways, let's get back to the story. So, for those that don't know. I had a 2016 Ford F-250 that I spent four years working on. Literally four years. Like, making it my baby. Like, it was it's pretty awesome. I got, I got bit, uh, thanks to an old friend, I got bit by the horsepower bug, and I went way down that rabbit hole. Uh, then we, I spent those four years making it basically indestructible to where we can literally go hunt out of it, whatever the case may be. It was your daily driver, too. Yes, it was my daily driver. And uh, words to the wise, just build a different rig. Don't. don't. <laughs> there were <laughs> several times, like, because we would literally go anywhere in this truck. There were several times I'd roll back up to the ranch, like, limping in because I had found a new weak spot somewhere. Like, there was one time we rode in from hunt that literally, uh, the radiators were just dripping all of its fluid. Like, oh, it's time to get new radiators, you know, because the factory radiators are garbage. But anyways, like I spent all this money and time, four years to be precise. And actually, the week I wrecked it, which happened to be on my birthday, I had just picked it up because we were doing like a one last little tweak to the motor. And I was like, I'm done with the motor. This is a bit ridiculous. Like it's, it's fast enough. I mean, but it was line x and lift kit i had a full like badass onboard air system like all kinds of shit done to this pickup you cussed you had the hunting rack too yes was- so on top of that it was a, it was a four-door four drive i put a custom flatbed on it had everything line x aftermarket wheels tires and all this other, you know all these things and uh basically had just about touched every single part on the pickup just beefing everything up. Because literally, I was like, I want to be able to drive this down the highway and then go drive up that mountain. And we did that a couple times. So, on top of that, I had just got through finishing a custom rack. Which you may or may not see photos of it. I don't, yeah, I don't no, know which no, one. Yeah, we'll, I don't, we'll the, have photos. The photos you have may be wrecked. <laughs> it was. Well, I think I have some before that, right? Because it was that was when you had the you converted to flatbed and then had like almost like this the rack is like a skid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it is two, February twentieth, two thousand twenty. <laughs> his birthday. <laughs> My birthday. Which means his birthday is coming up, folks. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, I am going down to one of our hunting places. You're turning forty. Yeah, I'm turning thirty. It must be nice. I'm feeling it. No, like like <laughs> like we always talked about. But yes. Anyway. Yes. So I am heading out to one of our places that we usually hunt. I'm in my truck. Everything's it's Friday. Well, you're don't forget you're scouting. Yes. For the well, what I'm doing is is I'm going down there to make sure nothing's changed since January because it is oil field country. And pre-plot of our stand locations. Now, it's me and it's contest. So, literally, everything's already ready to go and basically in the truck. Minus a few guns. All the other gears, they already in there. Rack stays in there during hunt season. Like, that's how I rode back then. But So, in order to get to this place, you have to go down what is known as one of the death highways here in West Texas. Now, it has changed 
dramatically since this happened. It's still fucking terrible. Yeah, but it's still yeah, it's still a nightmare. But it's it's far nicer than it used to be. But anyways, this is a uh, probably about noon, noonish somewhere around there. Uh, traffic is a nightmare. <laughs> just just think like kind of old shitty road, but it's actually a two lane where I'm heading. I'm heading west. Two lanes on the west side. Uh, one lane going east. Flow of traffic out there is probably about 70, 75, whatever it was. And it's bumper to bumper nearly because it's boom time, you know, especially then. Uh, I don't know how it is now. I hadn't been out there in a long time. Well, I hadn't been out there since. It's pretty bad. I don't know. It had changed so much since the last time I'd been there because, I mean, that's kind of when I just stopped contest hunting and we just didn't go out there because other people were hunting that probably. That's how I started on dying, but anyways. So yeah, anytime you get west of Odessa, past Monaghan, like that, gosh, that traffic is. It's it was quite awful that day, but I mean I hadn't seen a wreck yet, and I'm I was literally ten and two in this traffic. Like you don't dick around which out is, here on this highway, which is good for you. That's very uh, rare occurrence. Yeah, I mean when I get into those situations, phone goes up on the phone holder. <laughs> I'm tending to because I, I I've been out here long enough to know like you've got to watch out for the semis, uh, especially the ones that haul sand. Yes, yeah. Well, crazy you said that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm gonna I th- I want to say going back thinking back on a place report, my speed was like 66, 67 because they come plugged my shit in and knew exactly what happened via the truck. They did it to everybody. So we'll get to why here. But, but. Wait, that's a thing? Yes. I don't like that. <laughs> like the little black box in the plane, like, delete it. Imagine what they'll do nowadays. That was a 2016. And they, they tell me, they could tell me exactly, um, according to them, they could tell me exactly when and where I braked. Interesting. Uh, which they could have been lying, but some guy with some fancy high dollar shit come out here and plugged it in. But anyways... So I am in the inside lane, which is also known as the passing lane. Uh, there's semis behind me. There's a semi, a sand hauler just above me to the right. And then it's just traffic, like back and forth each way. Like it's lots of traffic. Everybody's rolling 60 to 70 miles an hour. As you know, I move over from the, what is known as the slow lane, which is the right lane, getting to the passing lane. Uh, to overtake the sand hauler. Because what I normally do, and I still do it to this day, get as far away from them as possible, fast as possible. Like, I don't want to be around them. Any semis in West Texas, like, I'll either slow down dramatically or I'll get past them. Like, I, I don't I don't trust them whatsoever. Yeah. So, Smart. I'm going to go past this sand hauler and then move back over to the slow lane. As I start to... This is where like fancy effects and diagrams would be handy. <laughs> so I start to go up to pass the sand hauler. I'm right at the back of his trailer, literally. Like right there, even with his back wheels on the trailer. And out of nowhere, the truck comes over. <laughs> so I'm just like, fuck me. We're all going to die. Because, you know, that's the first thing I remember entering my mind. Not... You know, panic. I'm just like, oh, we're all dead because this is not going to end well. Because it's literally, truck comes over and there's oncoming traffic. There's traffic behind us. There's traffic in front of us. And uh, so naturally, you, you see the front of the truck first, you know, before you see the yeah. trailer coming over. So I'm trying to barely avoid this trailer. And I'm doing a good job. I can literally just rub my wheel a little bit. As we're kind of merging to the left into in, incoming traffic. As his front end jerks back over, it clears to where I can see what's coming, which is another semi. <laughs> so I'm just like, we're definitely all fucking dead now. Like that's semis behind me, both lanes. I, I can't shoot over to the right. There's a trailer here. I don't have enough time to shoot left, like cross the highway. So the only thing in my mind is like follow the trailer. So I then turn into the trailer. <laughs> like at this point, it's it was hard explaining this to the lawyers, and you'll find out why there's lawyers involved here in a minute. Why there's such minimal damage 
on that side of the truck. I'm like, you don't understand. I was actively dodging it. And then it like, as he's going over, I am literally hugging that bitch. And the only damage was caused by me literally going back into the trailer and sticking it to the floor. Cause I'm just like, can I get my truck on this trailer? Can I go over this trailer? Can I push the trailer? Like anything to get out of this <laughs> lane? Not hit a head, head Cause head I mean, and I'm explaining this like it took forever, but we're literally talking split seconds here. Like it's, it's happening really fast, but this is my mental pers- like process. And you can see the truck and see like, this is what happened. Like the damage to that side of the truck is very minimal because literally I was like, Oh shit. And then, Oh shit. You know, it's going back in. And then, uh, literally right there where I'm shoving into the treader as well on the wheel as well. So it's not doing shit to his, his shit. Uh, it's not obviously not pushing the semi out of the way full of sand. And I'm, I'm see seeing if you just this. would have got a little bit more torque. Just, I know. I know. Just, <laughs> <laughs> upgrade just a little bit more horsepower. God damn it. Oh, I'm telling you, I had that thing to the floor, which obviously I'm not going anywhere because I'm pushed up against this trailer. But at the, at the return point, when I know I'm into the trailer, it got stuck to the floor. Like, I'm just like, throttle out, bitch. You know, that was my only option. There was no, if I'd have stopped dead, like everybody's dead, uh, you know, just like slammed on the brakes. Like my only option I seen in my mind was just, I don't know. Well, you know, the thing to point out is, again, anytime you get west of Midland, Odessa, is people drive with like minimal distance, like at 75 there's like no distance <laughs> it's, from it's, bu- like it's bumper to bumper no, no, at 75 no, was, miles an hour. There's literally people right on my ass, both lanes. Yeah. And like I said, I know it seems as if I'm drawing this out, but literally the other oncoming semis right up at the front of the semi. Like, I don't know how they didn't hit. It was by some miracle that they just barely missed each other. And then you got me over here, you know, uh, can't hit the brakes. Can't go right. Don't have enough time to shoot left. So at some point, I'm just like, oh, I know I said I wasn't going to cuss, but I've already cussed once. So R rated episode here, folks. Uh, There's going to be a couple F bombs. I'm like, oh, fuck. We're going to hit head on. Like, this is happening. This guy is not moving. My later on during court proceedings and whatnot what have you my question to this guy's lawyers was like can you kindly ask that gentleman why he didn't fucking swerve to the right but whatever but whatever i'm like we're all gonna fucking die but it seems like i should be jumping to the passenger seat i don't know why why i thought that was gonna do anything because in the back of mind i'm just like oh we're all fucking dead like everybody within the radius here is dead i just kept going through my mind like everybody's dead this is gonna be tragic this is <laughs> important note to point out you are not wearing a seatbelt. no now that court has over i can say that <laughs> no i dive over to the passenger seat when i'm just like this ain't working. <laughs> this ain't fast enough. I don't know what. And again, I, I'm, I know this doesn't seem real. Like you would have enough time. I don't know what else to tell you, but probably diving into the passenger seat, probably save this arm at least. Oh, I was going to say, no, I mean, seeing the thing, like your fucking left leg and probably your left arm would have been gone. There's, it I, I don't been see. Good. Cause a fucking freight train rolled through that side of the truck. <laughs> yeah. And again, you'll see the pictures. And, uh, it was, uh, probably right here. I'll put some, but it is. It was crazy as shit because, I, like I said, I, you know, I had already accepted I'm dead. I'm the little guy in this situation. I'm dead. We're all dying. But I am going to last ditch effort dive over here in this fucking bachelor's sleep. Look, now, and uh, you know, I say freight train because that's literally what it felt and sounded like as this semi was. In all intents and purposes, it was a massively bad side swipe, thus taking off the side of my truck. That's heavy one. <laughs> yes. And, okay, truck hits mine. 
I'm going to like open my eyes and then we're not dead. Well, that I'm aware of airbags on the sides had deployed, but nothing on the front, but the, obviously the windshield just shattered the shit. <laughs> and I am again, like halfway on the console, halfway in the floorboard of the pasture side. And I just reach up. Like I pull myself up and look out the pasture door and I see a semi. Now, I, you know, pretty discombobulated here. Uh, don't know what the fuck's happening. I just know I see a semi out my passenger window. I jump back in the driver's seat, like all the way, and just shove the accelerator to the floor. And it's not doing shit, obviously. But there's another, you know, the side airbag's hanging down, even though there's nothing left here. And at some point, I'm like, this bitch ain't moving. I'm getting the fuck out. And again, I don't even know where the fuck we're at. So I just jump out of the truck and run away. <laughs> like I just jump out. Like, well, I say jump out. Literally step out of the truck. The way the way you explained it to me the day of is the truck, I pictured it like a 300, you know, when the guy chucks the spear at the giant elephant and it like, boom, and it like, it's like yes. sliding. Yes. And you like basically at the like end of the momentum yes. of the truck, you just like hopped out and you as like it's, stood on your feet. As this bitch is literally sliding into the opposite, come find out. I didn't know at the time. That semi I was seeing was actually stopped. But again, it just seemed semi. And the truck was literally sliding into the ditch as I walked out of the bitch like Harry Houdini. And that's actually what the first bystander said as he... He run up like panicked, like falling over and shit. Uh, and it was actually come find out the truck driver right behind me, directly behind me, not the one the opposite side. That was one of the first things he said. You know, something along the lines of Harry fucking Houdini just walks out of a goddamn truck and just got hit by some. I said, I don't know what to call it, but I just know I wanted to fuck out of there. Like, <laughs> and uh, so now. He's like, are you fucking all right? And I'm, you know, taking a little check. Yeah. Which he's just like, he's fucking white as a ghost. I take a moment to like scan my area. Cause now we're on the opposite side of the road by the fence. And there, and it, I swear to God, it looked like a scene out of a movie. Cause there's so many fucking vehicles just going off, still going off the road. And there's, there's just like vehicles everywhere. And there's just horns everywhere. And there's just shit scattered all across the highway. And the semi that I hit is way down the fucking road on the opposite side of the road through a fence. And my rack is uh, fucking gone. It's in the highway. Uh, and like, like I said, there's just shit scattered everywhere. And I'm just like, by this point in time, there's just tons of people running up everywhere. There's vehicles already trying to go. There's literally people trying to just be like, oh, that sucks. Let me get to work. You know, they're like running over shit. Oh, and by the way, within like 10 minutes, within the five minutes, someone had already posted on Facebook about the wreck. You tagged you. <laughs> yes. Within 10 minutes, people were already stealing my shit out of the road. Uh, yeah, because you had in Iraq, what, uh, Goal Zero? Yeti Goal Zeros that stayed in the toolboxes that were tied into lights, and also that was the way we charge our phones and calls and everything else. You know, the, the, the rack was just... Oh, short out to short action precision. You were wearing a short action precision hoodie. Yeah, uh, brought to you by short action precision. Um, yeah, within ten minutes, someone had already stole the gold zeros. I'm just like, God damn. Um, uh, and then chaos ensued, and I just, you know, I'm just like, well, fuck, <laughs> you know. Uh, obviously, called up Fitzy, and I'm like. Can you come get me? <laughs> I got a problem. So now I didn't call anyone else because I didn't want to worry anyone else. Meanwhile, I didn't know I'd already been tagged on Facebook and photos. <laughs> and uh, that's how I think that's how Brooke found out. And she was madder than shit. I mean, madder than shit that I didn't call her. And I'm just like, I know you would overreact. She's like, what the fuck? But anyways, uh, total loss there. Uh, quite horrible. It took two wreckers to pick up all my shit and haul away. Uh, and yeah, I mean, there's several other things like 
Uh, all my shit was scattered down the highway. I didn't go pick it all up. A uh, bunch of weird shit happened. Like in that door pocket, I used to carry a lot of shit in the door pockets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, she got you empty in here. Yeah. My pockets out because I had all the glass in them. Yeah. Damn, you have everything. <laughs> You, you always ask me everybody. why I document it, and that were four years later. I got, I got the receipts, bro. So, one of the weirdest things was in that door was a uh, entrance key card with a key on it. The key card went to the doors and ally, and the key went to the cabinets. Some of the cabinets, my favorite cabinets, the optic cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> so, the craziest shit ever is I found I found it literally everything. But the key card, they were tied together. The key card was on one spot, and the key I found all the way down the road by the semi that I, I got hit into. Now, this whole time, I'm looking at the semi down the road, and I don't, I guess we did a good job on the truck because my truck fared way better than the goddamn semi. Now, my truck was totaled. I mean, let's, it is what it is. But that semi, looking at the semi from down the road, I was like, that guy's dead. Because it, it did look like he got de- decapitated. But turns out he's kind of a short feller. So he was okay. Allegedly. Or he ended up being okay. Wait, but as the, at the time? At the time. Poor yeah. lawyers got involved. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Fitzgerald comes get me. We gather up gun suppressors. And I just want to point out, you called me. And I hauled ass. And the traffic was backed up. I remember, I think it was like five or six miles because I remember looking at my dash and I pulled up and it was just backed up and I just went over in the margin and just hauled ass up that. Yeah, because you thought, I remember this being the thing, you thought I said something about needing to whoop somebody's ass. I might have been saying some shit about the guy who calls the wreck. I don't remember. You thought there was like a, a rifle. fight going on. <laughs> I, don't, I was like, yeah, I don't know. Remember, I just remember grabbing a rifle and so like, I remember like sprinting yeah. off. I remember there, like, there was some miscommunication which i was i was rather mad at the fucking truck driver causing it uh in fact i told him one time take his ass back across the highway because I, I it's not time for me to talk to you yet <laughs> like anyways he tried to leave and people like bystanders made him stay and then you know th- they did all their shit and they gathered up all my shit and took my poor old my favorite truck ever Took it away, you know, in, in shambles. Another crazy thing uh, before we move on past the wreck truck. So on the driver wheel, driver's side front wheel, took a massive impact from the driver's side bumper on the semi. It fucking shattered the wheel into a million pieces, except for like the very center portion. There's a photo somewhere of it, Yeah. The rest of the wheel shattered into a million pieces. The tire was still fucking fine. I don't. I guess the wheel just exploded and the tire shot off. But the fucking the other. I don't remember the names of the companies. The other towing company that took the rack and that tire and all that shit. They kept the fucking tire. <laughs> I'm like, I want that tire back, bitch. They were pretty new then. That's right when I got those wheels and tires. I remember, like, didn't they try to fuck you on prize? Or they, yes, they, they it did. was. It was some. I mean, again, I just got screwed all the way around from everybody on this deal. But so moving on, like I, you know, got robbed, a fucking wreck, got screwed by the towing company. Uh, some asshole took my baby from me. You know, it was, it was a it was a bad birthday in in retrospect. You know, I'm just like, God damn, it's a pretty bad day. But we went ahead and went out there and did our scouting. <laughs> now. Like, by the time all this happens, we go out there to do our scouting and everything else. I get back at the house. I have to come up with a new vehicle because I had people coming in to hunt with me. It was my brother and a friend of mine and then a friend of my brother's. They're gonna, we're going to hunt the contest together. We grabbed another hunt truck, got it all set up. So I didn't sleep almost all that night. We get up and hunt all the next day into Sunday morning. Uh, get home, finally go to sleep. When I woke up. Monday morning, I felt like a goddamn semi run me over. Turns out, <laughs> and I still to this day have some sort of lower back issue that kind of flares up every once in a while. But I never went to the doctor. You know, it just it just happens every like every once in a while, it just gets bothering me, and I have to take care 
take her easy on certain things for a little bit, and then it goes away. It's fine. Now, immediately we get a lawyer, and I don't like lawyers whatsoever. And there's like, there's all kinds of problems because I'm like, I, I don't want to have to file my insurance. I want my goddamn truck paid for. That's all I want. I'm not suing no one. Like I'm not coming after any companies or anything like that. I just want my goddamn truck paid for because I had a lot of money invested in it. So we had our first lawyer and all that stuff. People drag their goddamn feet and it's the whole thing. Anyways, whilst the lawyer was dragging the feet, I get served. The goddamn guy that I got hit into was suing everybody. <laughs> Just said, get them all. So that started this three and a half, three and three quarter year procedure of bullshit. That's literally what it boils down to. So what happens then is my insurance company's like, uh, we'll supply a lawyer, you know, cause they're going to be the ones that are going to have to fucking pay. So then COVID happens. COVID literally kicks off right after this, right? Yeah. yeah it was February. So January had already was kind of bumbling. Yeah. COVID really hit. It was like second week of March. So you're two weeks out. So they literally like shut down courts and all that. And it, and it just prolongs this thing forever. Uh, it like it would go like six months, and I didn't, I wouldn't hear nothing from no one. So I just reach out to my lawyer. Which shout out to Ken, my lawyer. I am gonna say his name. I don't remember his last name, but I have to look on the emails. I think he's out of San Antonio. Ken. Oh, Ken. Fantastic guy. Fantastic lawyer. Hell yeah. Uh, I our first conversations. I was still really salty about it. <laughs> and I, I had a lot of choice things to say about the gentleman who caused the wreck and the fact that uh, someone along the lines of over my dead goddamn body, I will rot in prison before I give anybody a dime. Because I don't, you know, I'm a hillbilly. I don't know what's happening. I'm like, wait, so wait, like, could this, could I potentially have to owe someone? Like, what about insurance? And, you know, he's like, obviously he's being thorough and everything else. And I'm just like, you don't want me in the courtroom. <laughs> that's all I told Ken. And I'm sure he's thinking like Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, because basically what it boils down to is the reason why they rolled me in with a lawsuit is because the other guy was just going to blame us anyways. Because technically, it was my truck. <laughs> you, know, you know, even though the other guy caused the wreck, technically it was my truck that hit the semi. And again, that guy's suing both of us. COVID court, like things get pushed back and all this other bullshit and everything else. And I, I just, like I said, I'd it'd go months without hearing anything. And I'd reach out to Ken and he'd check in on it. He's like, well, you're still, you know, it's way far behind because of COVID and all this other stuff. So the whole time I'm just like, this is a goddamn nightmare. Like I, so finally in 2023, <laughs> they start like wanting to do something here. And uh, first, they're just like, you need to do a, uh, obviously, we'd done all the other stuff, like receipts for all the shit on the pickup and like all that stuff. And like, they took my account of what happened. We wrangled up all the police reports and uh, all that shit. Here's some, a bit of information for you folks that you should definitely do if, and I hope you nev never are. If you're ever in any type of wreck, take a nauseating amount of photos and get witnesses, information, phone numbers, all that shit. Because I, we had witnesses. We had a, a star witness, but no one, including the goddamn uh, DPS officers, got his fucking phone number or his name. They took his uh, account. Now, luckily, we didn't end up needing that, but, you know, had we had to have gone to court, which I, by the time we're rolling back around getting into it, 22 three, I'm just like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I probably became the worst person ever because I'm, I wasn't, I wasn't salty about it anymore because I'm just like, I, 
At a certain point, I just was like, I've really grown as a person since then. So, I don't. well, I mean, looking at the truck every goddamn day for a couple of years, I'm just finally just like went numb about it. So uh, like, your your honor, to be fair, you weren't actually there. <laughs> you know, I guess you know. At a certain point, I was like, this is insurance company. Like, I had already been read into all the details about the insurance companies and like all the scandals is already happening. We'll get into the scandal shit here in a minute. I'm just like, oh. Oh, I see where this is headed. Your honor, it was my birthday. <laughs> I'm going to get fucked. Like, these people are going to get something. You know, Lord's going to get paid, for God's sakes. Wade, little old Wade over here is going to get fucked. Like, I, I already see where it's headed because, okay, let me just break this down for you. The guy who calls the wreck, his insurance policy covered $750,000. Wade's little policy, whatever it is, hundred thousand. I don't remember. You know, nothing crazy. Obviously, the guy who is suing everyone. I gotta be careful what I say because I don't want to get sued again. Uh, let's just say his lawyers probably are ambulance chasers. They're wanting. You have to like. You have to like qualify. I think allegedly. I feel like. Yeah, I'm going to need you to make sure I don't say anything. Uh, as your attorney, I advise you not to speak on the subject. <laughs> no, I asked him. He said I can now. <laughs> so. Uh, my my uh, my client takes the fifth. Mm-hmm. His, his, his ask is quite ridiculous. Hundred and like one billion dollars. I mean, they might as well had. It was an amount that far exceeds everyone's insurances. And then, like, they're, like, getting him to do go to the doctors. And, like, it's the whole thing. Now, unbeknownst to me, this some bitch got some money right off the bat from the guy who calls the Rex insurance company. He got, like, 40K or something to pay for a truck or whatever. So, there goes 40K of the 750. So, we're at 710 now. So it comes down to it, and they're like, you got to come down here to San Antonio to do a uh, deposition. Deposition, And then my response was, I didn't have the fucking wreck in San Antonio. I'm not going to San Antonio. And it was like crickets on the phone. He <laughs> was like, I bet we could still do like, uh, what's the video thing? Like a Zoom. Zoom? Because that's what we did during uh, COVID. Let me, let me find out. I said, Probably should, because I'm not going to fucking San Antonio. <laughs> uh, so they, you know, politely was like, yeah, we could do that. So uh, we did, like, God bless my poor lawyer. Like, I'm sure he was worried that this mouth was going to get out of hand. Because he was like, I know, like, he was like, I know how like talking about this could potentially get you fired up. Because when we first started talking, you were pretty fired up about it. He said, you mellowed out a lot about this situation he said, but they're going to probably try to make you angry. Like, he started telling me all these stories. and Yeah, haven't you seen A Few Good Men? Not in a long time. Did you order the code red? <laughs> You're goddamn right I did. <laughs> Basically, like, he painted a picture like these some bitches was going to try anything. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, you're talking to an expert level shit talker here. <laughs> like, I said, I said, I... I can, you know, control it. I said, am I allowed to be like salty bank to him? He's like, no. <laughs> so, like, he prepares me. Like, he's like, you need to answer like this. this, this. I said, well, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, I didn't fucking do anything wrong. So, I, I'm going to answer truthfully. Like, just so you're aware. I said, I, you know, which he wasn't telling me to lie. He was just like. You know, doing the lawyer dance. Uh, he was like, "Yeah, that's that's what I want you to do." He said, "But you don't you don't give them no more information than what they absolutely need, or else they will literally turn anything against you." Which I mean, then I started looking into depositions and how lawyers actually conduct them and everything else, and I was like, "Oh yeah, he's hundred percent right. Like it's they're literally just going to be looking for anything." So we had me a little bit. I'm I don't get nervous about much. He had a little bit nervous about this. I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Like, I was not. But it went swimmingly well. Uh, it was fucking easy. Like, there was one time 
the uh, the guy's lawyer who calls the wreck got he almost got me going. And I was just like, mm, no, you know, I finally just brushed it off. It, it, other than that, it went great. Like it was super simple, pretty quick. They they didn't come after me nowhere near as hard as what he made it sound like they possibly might. So I mean, it went about as good as it possibly could. So depositions over, blah blah. blah. This carries on for another good while. And then he lays out the ter- like all the bullshit for me, like the numbers game. He's like, yeah, they're asking for a lot. I'm <laughs> just a lot. A whole lot. And in the meantime, I told my lawyer, I'm like, you throw, might as well throw my shit in there. I, I wanna I want exactly what I got in this truck, which was like a smidgen compared to their lot. Like and it's literally the exact amount for the truck and the accoutrements. Like it, it's, I wasn't asking for any more, no less. I want what is right. Which, to, you know, his response was, "We could do it, but like, you know, the, no, it's just not going to happen." Like, basically, that's what he's saying. So, we go back and forth with lawyers and everything else, and there's like, "What about settling?" And finally, I just looked at a lawyer one day on a Zoom call, and I was like, listen, if we can just fucking be done with this, pull pull our fucking ask away. I, I could go to my insurance company and get fucked by them. If they will let me out of this goddamn stupid lawsuit bullshit, tell them we don't want nothing from nobody. Just... Tell that other guy's lawyer and insurance company, just give him the fucking 750 or 710, whatever's left, whatever it was. Just fucking be done. get me out of this. I'm tired of fucking with it. Like, I just want to move on. So, at first, the other guy's lawyers was like, no, no, we're not coming down off of our completely insane fucking number for this $750,000. He has millions and doctor's bills and blah, 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 blah. and then I'm just like now according to my lawyer the guy who was suing everyone was a really nice guy had been in the army he actually started driving a truck to retire he was driving a pipe hauler uh, had started driving a truck as a way to retire and he's just a nice guy and he fell in with the wrong lawyers allegedly <laughs> And they were trying to take advantage of the situation, basically. But at the end of the day, he's like, even if this goes to trial, something about Texas law or whatever, I don't remember what all the bullshit. I wish we would have done this sooner, but I just, I've been waiting on them to get to go ahead. The, we're not allowed to get any more than what this insurance company can pay. So somebody's getting fucked. The fair thing would have been to just pay me for my goddamn truck, give him the rest of the money, and tell them other, you know, cocksucking lawyers, fuck off. Like, let's be honest. That, what, what was left after paying for my piddly fucking shit compared to what they was asking, he'd have had to, enough to buy a truck four times over. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> I hadn't used that one in a while. So, somehow... They end up taking a deal. Wade will withdraw his ask. If y'all will take this, we'll go ahead and take that. Blah, blah, blah. Here's a funny situation. Uh, unle- I probably need to carefully dance around this subject. Allegedly. No, no, you can't out you can't you can't make a, a allegation. You 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 think or you feel. I think a certain lawyer, not my lawyer. You feel like a certain lawyer. I feel as if I heard somewhere that this particular lawyer was under indictment himself. (laughs) Hell yeah. For allegedly, I think, essentially, poisoning his girlfriend. It was caught on camera. And they needed to wrap this shit up before he went to trial. 
Allegedly, and I think this could be totally made up. I don't know. This is just, you know. In, in Roblox. Yeah. In Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. So it's not real people we're talking no. about. No. This is fake. This is all fake. It's satire. Yeah. So, and then I'm hearing like all these other stories, and I'm just like, J- what? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just like, oh my God. But, anyways. I finally get to sign the fucking paperwork that relinquishes me from being responsible for fucking anything, and I'm not going to be sued, and I'm going to, I'm scot-free, you know. We're done. Now, here's a fucked up part about it, and I'm not going to say the name of my insurance company, but uh, let's see. Ranch. Texas Ranch Agency. That's not the name, but I think I think you probably pick up where I'm throwing down here. Now, during the negotiations, my question was, here's my ask. I'll just go ahead and say it. I wanted $110,000. For everything I had into the truck, it was probably closer to one thirty, But one ten was fair enough. But again, you know, that's the truck and literally everything. Hundred ten grand. My ask to my insurance company was if they'll give me, say, say they go, we'll give him 50K to shut up and go away. Can I still make a claim on my insurance company for the remainder of the money? This is when I should have known I was going to get screwed. (laughs) My insurance company goes, nope. (laughs) <laughs> if you take anything from him we won't let you make a claim against us I just said okay so basically what they did to me was because the, the insurance company was involved in this another, another individual was in on the conversations other than my lawyer Basically, what they said was, and this is where I, the first time I kind of got upset since the beginning, like I'd been okay with everything till the, this point. Basically, they come to me and I was like, you got a couple decisions here. You can go to court. You can take this all the way to court and try to get some sort of settlement. Like, And they're like, maybe if you go to court, They'll do that. They'll like 750, 100 awarded to Wade, the rest goes to the other guy. Fuck your bullshit. But they may award you $10,000. And if you take it, that's all you get. So if you go to court, we ain't giving you shit. So basically, without saying it, but saying it, they were like, take the fucking, take the take the easy way out and try to settle with us is what they're wanting. I was being, I was being urged to do so. Not by my lawyer, mind you. My lawyer was like, you do it. You do what you want to do. But anyways, and then you realize this, this country set up to fuck the the little guy. Exactly. Insurance is a scam. It is. I've always said that, but so here's the funny part. I, I'm just like, I, that day, to the insurance person and my lawyer, I said, this is not directed to, towards you, Ken. You've been amazing. And hell, Ken was amazing. Hell yeah, Ken. Uh, he'd probably be listening to this. I sent him a sweater. It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> he had me tell some hunt stories to uh, some judges and shit. It was funny. But anyways, uh, I said, this is not directed towards you, Ken. I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to agree to this because I've realized that all you insurance companies are all the fucking same, and I'm going to take a fucking on this. I, already, I can already feel it. Yeah. Just let's be done with it. And that person, the insurance person, couldn't even look me in the fucking eyes when I said that. And I'm just right there. I'm just like, yeah, this is what's about to happen. So business is conducted. I've signed away. Everything everything's good. Done. Lawsuit over. My fucking insurance company goes crickets on me to the, to the tune of, I had to reach out to them like four or five times. 
I basically what I did was I got Ken involved. <laughs> I said, Ken, these fucks won't respond to me. Can you can you holler at someone? Well, then they get right on the phone with me. And they're like, black, black, you know, if we come get the truck, we'll give you 40. If you keep the truck, we'll give you 28. What the fuck are they going to do with it? That's exactly what I said. I said, what? I said, so you mean to tell me you're going to tag me that much when we've been holding the truck for you since 2020? I'm going to send you a storage bill. And that's exactly, I said, I said, you couldn't do a fucking thing if the ranch sent you a storage bill. Well, this guy was like getting mad as fuck. And, it, you know, I just, it just, you know, when you talk to certain motherfuckers, and I hope he's listening to this, you talk to certain motherfuckers and they talk to you just skeezy and they, they're like, you know, they're making it seem like they're doing you a good solid favor, you know. All of a sudden, like, well, listen, I really fought for you on this one. You exactly really, what the yeah. fuck he said. And that just infuriated me. I wanted to just go off of this guy so Dude, fucking I'm on, mad. I'm on your side. I want I want it to work for you. Oh, I was so fucking mad when he, like, he started that shit. Because I just want to be like, shut the fuck up. You're a fucking liar. You work for the goddamn company. And I guarantee fucking tell you, this is how it went down. They're like, we have to pay the lawyer X amount. We need to take that off of what we was going to give him. And that's when we come up with this little piss ant fucking number. It, and originally, I should have kept this fucking conversation. I had talked to a guy over a year ago about that very same thing. When they're like, our adjusters came out and they said, your truck was worth $32,000. I said, your fucking adjuster's a goddamn idiot. He don't even know what the fuck he's looking at. Can you please, can you please find me another one? That's exactly what I said. I said, also, because he was, I was asking him, like, what's it going to cost if y'all come get it? And, like, what's it going to get all that shit? And he, like, they started bringing up that $10,000 fucking bullshit. I said, uh, y'all, do, you do realize that I could fucking get the ranch to bill y'all a fuckload of money, right? This was only three years, uh, two years in or whatever it was. I said, you know, you know, that could be a thing, right? He's like, yeah, yeah, they should probably really take that into account. But I said, well, anyways, uh, you ain't getting this fucking truck for that little money. Like, it, that doesn't even fucking cover the fucking truck, let alone all the bullshit accessories that I paid insurance for to be covered. Like, I had this extra coverage bullshit. It's all bullshit, but this fucking guy. And he's like, well, you know, when we look at, you know, we... We value your truck at $32,000. Uh, I said, bull, uh, bull fucking shit. At the time of the wreck, the motherfuckers are going for way more than that. <laughs> I don't know what it is nowadays. So I don't keep up with the truck market. But I said, number fucking two, I said, the accessories. You couldn't even fucking, what you're allowing for accessories, you couldn't even fucking line X the son of a bitch for that much. Well, we don't give you full price on accessories. But I'm just like... You Your fucking price? math doesn't even add up. What do you give me ten dollars per accessory that costs thousands of fucking dollars? Shut the fuck up and just be like, I'm a, I work for a shitty fucking insurance company. I'm a fucking liar. If I don't, you know, if I if I get you to sit on this, I probably get a fucking bonus. So I'm just gonna fight this to the claw and act like your friend. Just. Just fucking tell me the truth. Be like, we don't really want to give you more because we had to pay a fucking lawyer for years on end. The, be fucking honest and then finally i was like you know what i said i know what you're you're looking for you're looking for me to go i accept whatever the fuck i said i said uh i want to tag you with a four years worth of storage bills and take you all to fucking court and get what's owed to me i said but just send me that bullshit fucking check and i said when i get it i'm fucking cancel my goddamn insurance and i'll go to someone else and right, he goes, okay. You know, that's that's all the fuck he was looking for is that that confirmation. Uh, my dad was rather upset that I uh, took <laughs> took that deal. He said, he said, why didn't you tell him come get? Because I told him I was like, send me the fucking twenty eight bullshit. I don't give a fuck. Uh, but I was like, why didn't you tell him come get the truck? That's extra ten thousand. You know, essentially ten thousand dollars. I said. I said, it's principal. Yeah. 
I'm going to blow that motherfucker up on a goddamn YouTube video and with a fucking banner on it that says the name of the goddamn insurance company. Probably all the insurance companies involved. <laughs> Dad was like, you could do, you know, he's just not, he's not down with this idea of just blowing that fuck up. I'm like, I said, I said, uh, it's not, I don't want him on this fucking property. Like I just, I don't, I said, and I probably will blow it up for a fucking YouTube video. <laughs> like, there's nothing, literally nothing left on it. That's worth a fuck. Like it's trashed. It's, it's, it's been sitting it also the sit Texas there for four, for four fucking years. Like the shit that you could have gotten is fucked by now. Like it's fucked. Like, but anyways, uh, yeah, there's so many more lawyer stories that I could tell, but I, I probably shouldn't <laughs> so just fucking cause, uh, I heard some dirt on some people, but the funny thing is during the, uh, What's the thing where we're trying to, not the uh, the questioning, the next one we're trying to settle? What's that called? Uh, it was my other Zoom stuff. Uh, fuck. Like the, the one where the lawyers questioned me was the first one. And then we when we we did this like basically where every party's in their own little thing. And one guy goes back and forth. And it's like, this is what they're offering. This is what they're offering. Uh, fuck. I'm, I'm Googling it. I don't remember what it's called now. Oh, uh, mediation mediation. Yeah. So we had again, zoom. Cause I told him I'm not going to fucking San Antonio. The fucking wreck didn't happen in San Antonio. So you I'm, fucked up. You're like, are you guys going to pay my bills? Like, <laughs> I only stay at Hotel Emma. You take your... You no, take they wouldn't have paid for fucking shit. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, so we Zoomed our mediation, and then uh, it was a... I think he's a retired judge who did the mediation. That guy was cool as fuck, and I wish I could remember his fucking name. Uh, after the mediation's over, like, we sit there and bullshit on Zoom. They wanted to know stuff about coyotes and all this other stuff. <laughs> it, was all, it was pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah... I guess that's a chapter in my life we can close. Don't don't drive west of Odessa. <laughs> yeah, I just don't. Oh, wait, actually, let's just don't drive west of Midland. Yeah, just don't come to Midland. <laughs> people, I swear. people, I've people don't take me seriously. I get really like when driving over there, and it's, this has happened recently because I had to go out to uh, Cayenosa. <laughs> And I was like, I'm like, you people don't understand how dangerous these fucking roads are. Like, I, I will, like, not drive it during certain times and, like, like fucking deal with it. There has been... I'm going to knock the shit out of this wood. Just about every week, if you run these highways enough, you will almost get hit by a semi. Oh, fuck yeah. Let me tell you something. That it's mostly the goddamn sand haulers. Oh, yeah. 100%. It's the truck driver's... These fucking companies, I'm going to go on a rant right fucking now. These fucking companies, they just need to, they put bodies in trucks. Now, I am not, if you're a good outstanding company and you have legitimate employees and everything else, this isn't directed towards you. You shouldn't even be upset about this. But the fucking companies, they know, they know who they are. They just throw whatever fucking non-English speaking, Colombian, fucking Peruvian, it whatever the fuck. Doesn't make a fuck. Work as many hours. Yes. Overworked. And these are the motherfuckers who either get confused or they don't know how to fucking drive. Like, these are the motherfuckers causing the goddamn wrecks 90% of the time. Or they're the ones driving up in your fucking yard in the middle of the night. Like, stupid shit. Oh, my fucking God. Like, it's... I've avoided countless amounts of wrecks since then. Like, because when you get around semis, you better be, like, fucking... Well, I'm good with you, what you said earlier. I, I try to space out where they're, like, I'll go... I, 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 there's certain areas I'll drive like 10 under where it's just like where there's just nobody near me. I either get away from them fast or I stay I like it, I slow. But not even on down. the road. I mean, they will fucking pull out. Don't give a shit. They will pull out in front of you. I mean, we see Rex weekly. Oh, yeah. Sometimes multiple weekly. They'll pull out in front of whoever. They'll just swerve over into your traffic. Hell, as soon as I got, it wasn't long after I got the 19, 2019 truck. I was going to LA in the turning lane and the fucking idiot 
in opposite lane decided that he needed to turn. So he just takes the fuck off. I see in this happening, like midway going through the fucking uh, intersection, and it's right there as you come in the middle and on the, where you take the right, go the back way, where you can't go right because of the yeah. poles. My only option was to quickly throw this fucking reverse and floor it. And I just barely got away with a scratch on the mirror. And then the fucking guy literally stops like a mile down the road. Did I hit you? <laughs> I said, if there had been someone behind me, you fucking would have. But uh, you got lucky. There was no one behind me. I was able to reverse the fuck out and literally turn to the right as he was coming across. I'm like, you do realize that's a fucking turn lane that I was in, right? Like, <laughs> what the fuck you doing? Oh, my GPS. That's when, that's always their fucking excuse. Like, GPS, bleh, you know. Yeah, it's it's so funny for those not from... Anybody from West Texas is going to completely understand this. Yeah. Anybody not from West Texas... Uh, you, I was driving back from Fort Worth yesterday, and it's as soon as you hit Big Spring, it's like it, it's literally a whole different... like, st- like There's a reason why they go, welcome to the Thunderdome. <laughs> yeah. You just... I mean, you, you drive normal, and then as soon as you hit Big Spring, it's like, no matter how fast you're going in the passing lane... You be doing twenty over. Somebody's gonna be on so your fucking ass. Fucking semi is gonna pass you. Yeah, no. Some sim- yeah, <laughs> you, you'll never go. And that's what pisses me off. Those, like, it's one thing if it's like a truck or something, but when a semi, like you're you're speeding and they're on your fucking ass, and you're yeah. like, what do you want me to do here? Oh, it's so. This funny part about moving down here, and we moved down here when it was still slow. Everybody would tell me the same shit. Like it's fucking crazy out there, you know? and I'm just like, yeah. And I had Mo, Mo 07. <laughs> used the fuck up. It was not fast at all. And I had hit an age living in North Texas, especially being in traffic all the time. Just didn't drive fast. Just didn't drive fast at all. Like 70 was as fast as I got. The first fucking night I was living here, we had gone to Big Lake to go fox hunting. As soon as I got on the highway, I'm going 70 miles an hour in a fucking semi past me like I was fucking backing up. I was like, oh, and like, and when I say pass me, it didn't just pass me. It passed me and almost hit an oncoming truck. And then that night alone, just going back and forth the big lake, I seen like multiple almost wrecks because people passed people. I was like, I'm going to have to get a faster fucking truck if I'm going to make it out here. <laughs> well, yeah, it, crazy. it gets to the point where it, like, it's almost more dangerous for you to drive even the speed limit sometimes. Like yes. you're putting yourself at massive risk. Like you have, you have to keep up with the with everybody else because it's like it's i mean i swear to god like there some sometimes it just feels like these fucks are just like trying to run you over <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how to explain it because like some way you ever have weights where it's like every fucking day i say i almost hit you yeah. and i was like what are we doing is somebody working a lot of overtime like what is happening here i mean same thing a couple weeks ago driving back from we we're coming back from the Wyo Ranch, but we came up. We had to go up through Fort Stockton for some other stuff, and we come back from Monahans. And I mean, from Monahans to West Odessa, I mean, white knuckle, like you said, ten and two, and like you're driving 80, 85, because that's what everybody else is driving. But it's like lockstep, like you're like fucking boxed in the whole time. And it finally cleared up, and I was like, I was fucking tired at this point, tired as shit. And then this just 18 wheeler decides for no reason, because I'm like watching the traffic ahead of him. There's nobody in his lane. He just decides, I'm going to swerve over right in your lane. Like, would have clipped me in the van. I had to like mash the brakes. And it's just, uh. it's just fucking exhaust. Like, <laughs> it's like, why would you, other than to fuck with me, why are you moving over? It's, it's, it's fucking chaos out here. Uh, but the goddamn but fucking sand trucks, I fucking sand hate trucks fucking took my most favored truck ever. And I remember, uh, you know, the the amount of phone calls and messages I got because literally someone posted that shit on Facebook immediately <laughs> was uh, fairly staggering. Uh, My people do love me. And I just remember thinking like, but my truck. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you're alive, though. I'm like, I might want to give up like a finger to have that truck. Like, I, don't, I don't know if I'd go full arm unless I could get a robot arm. That was my fucking favorite truck. Well, it's not like, okay, like you just take like, oh, the raw cost of the vehicle and the, oh, the cost of all the shit. 
I mean, that's a pittance compared to the amount of time. Yes. Invested yes. in fucking. Yeah. That. That was, and it was. And you had like, to go back to a normal guy with a normal truck. <laughs> and it, what it what it did was it made me like severely gun shy to do anything. Like I've only done, I've only put a lift kit, wheels, and tires. Uh, well, I did my air system because like that's uh, which I mean I still had the wheels off of the wreck truck because I had a full size spare. And the only one that got smoked was the driver's side. Everything else, like it busted one of the back tires, like a piece of metal got into it off the rack, off the basket. So I just had to buy uh, one new tire. And then I still have those wheels. Obviously, I've gone through several more tires since then. But like I've been severely gun shy to do stuff with this. And I'm just like, any fucking day now, goddamn semi's going to try and take this bitch from me. They just. Don't want me to have nice things. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I say all that to say this. Be careful out there. <laughs> don't trust a fucking insurance company ever. Yeah. They're not out for you. That's horse shit. And we probably... We, the, the only reason why... The, the fucked up part is... You know what? I'm going to call out one of my friends. Jimmy, you fuck. <laughs> Jimmy... I'm not going to say his last name. A buddy of mine, this was years ago now, uh, we were just bullshitting one day, and he's like, hey, I work for uh, blah, blah, insurance company now. Uh, are y'all happy with y'all's insurance? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Brooke handles all that shit. It's fucking. So he's like, let us do your insurance. I don't care. Let's do it. So we did it. Sometime after that, like literally, like I think it was right before the wreck. Like he goes, moves on to a different career. Uh, and we we're literally about to drop them fucks because the broker, broker's always like, "I don't like this company." And I was like, oh, "Jimmy, you take care of us." Damn it, I said his name. <laughs> you already said it. Oh, I was like, "Jimmy, you take care of us." And then when Jimmy left, I'm like, "Let's get fucking rid of these people." <laughs> And then the wreck happened. So we've been just locked into these fucks ever since 2000, uh, probably 19, I'd imagine. But don't worry. When we get rid of you, very, I mean, t- probably as soon as the fucking check come, checks come in, it's, it's fucking done. Like, and you know, you're not going to find an insurance company out there that's like good, moral, like, but I'll say this. We I know there's some insurance people that listen to the podcast. Drop down below the name of your company and all that shit and uh sell me on your insurance company because I'm in the market. <laughs> but anyways. I think if any- there's a meme where it's like uh it's like the surprise Pikachu, it's like insurance companies when they have to you know, like pay pay for a policy that you exactly. Do ridiculous yeah you give them all kinds of fucking money in the minute like yeah, you, think about how much over the years auto insurance you paid i fucking shit i was like hey when i was young and i had to buy really high insurance tells about 30 <laughs> <laughs> but anyways any final closing thoughts john other than your other final closing thought um everyone i'm sorry for making taylor swift a thing <laughs> I think I think it's gone. It's gone too far. She's ruining the NFL, John. I mean, I think sports are gay. I think that's the way it irritates me the most. So I have to hear about sports even more. But officially, my as adorable as she is, my my um, this is like totally my sister, my mom thing. My niece comes up with her outfit that she's gonna wear to watch the Super Bowl, and it's uh. What does the front say? Go Taylor's boyfriend, and then it has the that uh, Travis Kelsey's <laughs> name and number on the back of it. And then it was a damn ha- like a, a bow for her hair that was um, Taylor Swift with the Chiefs logo. And I'm just like, imagine if you will. I'm like, I just it feels like I, I wanted to call it a couple games ago. That and again, I don't watch any sports, but I'm like those motherfuckers. Like now, there's a consp- there's a whole conspiracy about it. I'm like, this shit feels rigged. Like, Imagine if you will, John. You're a young boy. 
You're just eating up with a sports bug. You commit your goddamn life to this sport, to this thing. Like it's it's this is who you are. You blood, sweat, tears. You you achieve all these local goals and everything else. You and like you you, you, you you miss out on getting a TBI. Yes. You don't blow your ACL in high you school. You just you give up everything to your fucking sport, and you mastered enough to to uh, hit the highest level, John, the NFL, and now you're known as Taylor Swift's boyfriend. <laughs> I drown that bitch in the bathtub. But that's what. But that's what's weird about it is, <laughs> like when you look into it, like he he got paid by, by the one company that did the one thing that you they they forced you to do a couple years ago. I don't, it's still actually get flagged on YouTube, <laughs> and like he paid, was paid by them and like all the other shit. And you're just like, it's rigged. Like, this just like this it's just rigged. like stinks. Like this like there's just something all off rigged. about it. It's oh, all 100%. rigged. percent. It's all rigged. They just they needed they needed a ratings bump for the NFL. So well, I was uh, wondering like how many how many fucking wives are going to be watching the NF, like the Super Bowl. It's so, like how much I would love to know how much more they're charging for the ads this year. Probably a fucking lot. And it's, it's Taylor Swift. Did her fucking movie do like ridiculous like insane? It's insane. Speaking of March fifteenth, Disney Plus Taylor Swift's uh, Eras Tour concert will be coming out. So. But- if you haven't seen it, check that out on Disney Plus, the exclusive place for the streaming of it. Uh, she's in Japan right now. I was going to go to that, but stupid. I'll, I'll, I'm going back at the end of the year. One of the concerts. Stupid. Skank. It's great. Well, I mean, oh, also she's dropping a new album. <laughs> That's a new. What, what is, is it about her boyfriends? Like, what is this one about? Uh, no, I don't care. <laughs> the best part, it's actually it's actually funny. So it's a uh, the, the album's called the Tortured Poet Society. Oh wait, is it? and it's I just I saw a tweet that actually cracked me up. It was like, You're a billionaire, you can't be a tortured poet. Like Exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah, I don't know. It's I'm just well, I'm overwhelmed with the world and everything going on in it, so I don't mostly don't pay attention to it. Uh yeah, it sounds that. like it. I know my I know my little thing. I have my I have my girlies that keep me up to date. Jesus Christ. That's a great place in this. Yeah. With gayness. I'm trying to think, I feel like I have more gayness. What what else is? Oh, there's plenty. Oh yeah, there's plenty, but we can't we can't spoil that for you guys. Yeah, there's some stuff coming out of here we can't talk about right now. <laughs> I'm touching it right now, but you can't <clears throat> That did not sound very well. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't <laughs> we're talking about equipment here, yeah, and not that kind of equipment. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about equipment. <laughs> you didn't make it any better. <laughs> we're talking about a, a physical item that is not no. It's bigger than two inches. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a unit. <laughs> well, that's enough. See you guys next time. <laughs>